Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna see just how capable the DigiTact is as an all-in-one machine or groove box and see if we can make a full track as if we were in a DAW with B section fills, all that kind of stuff using just the DigiTact. And since it's a sampler and it really opens up when you start to use MIDI as it gives you four voice polyphony, we're gonna pair it with the Korg Mini Log. We're gonna use the slice mode workflow in the DigiTact to just completely chop up the samples that we throw in it and really change it all around, which is, I think, one of the best features of the DigiTact and what really separates it for me from a DAW. Alright, so let's check out what we've got on the Korg Mini Log. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Los Angeles, so I think we'll make some synthwave, and for that, I find this one works really well. Nice pad type sound, but I like that you can get a little more percussive on it. The way I've routed the sample, it's only on what's coming in. It's not everything, so it's not gonna take any of the drums. So rather than a click track, we've already got the basis of our drums for the track. I don't know, it just is, feels a little more genuine to me recording it in, because that's what the drums are gonna be rather than just a click. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're going to go into the sampler, and all you gotta do is just hit this. And there's two ways to arm it. You can arm it, or you can just start recording. But what I like to do is set the step length so that it's a perfect loop when it finishes. Let's start playing it, and we'll just record it in. We have to arm it. Oh, and let's put it to 107. I've really been digging 107 for um, synthwave. There, nice, a little slower. All right, let's go back. We'll save it and then we'll throw it into channel eight. That's where I like to put my main sample and have most everything else in the other spot. So I've got my sound set up and six and seven will probably change around a little bit because I'm gonna need a bass somewhere um, and I want to save the MIDI for using either pads or melody. So we'll use a bass from the single cycle waveforms that come with the DigiTac. So we'll check that out too. I've got the kick, which is a Lindrum. The snare is the uh, normal one, but what we're gonna do is add Add some distortion and then a nice healthy bit of reverb which we need to set up the reverb put up some delay there we drop the pitch a little bit and I'm just gonna take down that reverb a little more but that gives it that more synth wavy vibe one thing I've been doing a lot when I do four on the floor is take that second kick and put it up very early you know a step early but then nudge it almost all the way to what would be five so let me just play without the micro timing so you can hear it. So if we add a snare, see that it gives it that slight off time, makes it a little more human. And then got a hi-hat, so we'll just put that in. We're gonna do those like that. And then I'm gonna set these to a much lower volume. Let's do, let's say 60. So now we've got some velocity changes to the hi-hat. We're gonna get a clap just on the last one, nudge it a little bit early. We're gonna add a lot of reverb to the clap. And I'm also going to add some attack because I want the main plosive or transient of the snare to be from the snare and the clap is just kind of an afterthought. Hear it? It just kind of flows afterwards and adds a little more variety. We're also going to make this 64 steps, but just to start, let's go back to the snare real quick, add some ghost notes. Really quiet. Let's just get them off the grid a little bit. I want even less. You know what, let's put this almost to eight. There, now it kind of makes the snare rolling and once sounds start coming in, you won't even notice it. Last thing we need, I've been just putting cowbell randomly in tracks just to add a little more strange variety. There it is. All right, and we're gonna need to change the volume. Just add a little reverb and we'll pan this a little bit to the right. And then the hi-hat needs to go a little bit to the left. There we go and maybe just a touch of delay on the hi-hat. Okay, so now we can go to the sample. So we've got the sample and let's just mess around with it a little bit. Let's first, we gotta go to slice cause that's the mode we're gonna work with. I really like slice mode and you'll see why. So 
that's the sample right now let's move this to 30 second or 32 slices you can mess around with all kinds of stuff you could have it play backwards anything what i like about slice mode is when you move the pitch you can still control the timing because you're putting the full sample into small segments and then triggering it so it gives you a lot of ways to work let's add a bunch of reverb and some delay Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. Let's get some distortion. This was a pad, right? A little uh, percussive pad, but we're going to mess with attack and release and all that. Let's hear how it sounds. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so we're going to need to make it 64 steps. So we're going to do that and then there we go perfect okay so let's get out of the chromatic mode and let's do some changes now you want to make sure you have that off because if you don't it's going to automate it and we don't want to do all these changes as we figure stuff out i don't want to automate all right, so I'm messing with the filter. Envelope gives it much more of a pluck at the start. That's what we want. And I'm just taking down some of the low end, but adding some uh, resonance. I'm just maxing it so you can kind of get an idea. So this is what it originally sounds like, but if we take the filter down, but add resonance, gives the high end some interesting harmonics and things like that. Now what we could even do is just see what it sounds like dropping it a couple of semitones. I just kind of like that, we dropped it three. Kind of like that drop three. Now, when we start trying to load in melodies, it might make it a little complicated. Okay, so it seems to make it maybe, um, yeah, I think since we dropped a three, we're making it A major since we were in C major. Let's just go with it. I think when we do the bass, we'll just drop that three semitones so we can just cheat. But if we want to do MIDI, we're gonna have to make sure we remember it's an A major. So we'll tackle that if and when we come to it. But for now, I like to drop that three octaves. It sounds good. Now let's go into the LFO and let's set it to filter frequency. All right, I like that. A couple things I want to fix in the sequence. It's these ones, I want to take down in volume a little bit. Okay, lastly, I want to see, let's change the uh, tack and release on this second to last one. Just doesn't sound right where I want it. Yeah, that's better. And then let's also fix this one a little longer. And I'm gonna up the delay. Actually, we'll lower the delay a little bit on those. a little off grid yeah there we go that's perfect that's what i wanted okay i like that symbol we have the cowbell see this is the one problem we're going to run into using just the dicky tact we've got a limited space we have eight sample tracks and then midi but we're only using a synth that only has four voices and this can only program four voices per track let's figure out a way around these limitations right i think we're going to need a melody for this track so i'm going to try to hold off on using the mini log for bass right now so the reason i'm finding we're at a standstill a little bit is i want a cymbal but i also want a bass now one thing we can do some of these tracks aren't 
using a lot. So we can make one of these sample tracks double as both something and something else. So like a clap, because we're only using that on 13 and then have the symbol there. Maybe we won't need to, let's just see. We could add a little more um, variety by doing that too, even if we don't take up more than what we need. But let's set six to a bass and we'll keep this symbol. Might get a little confusing if we're doing mutes and things, but yeah, that's fine. So let's change this to a bass. I have one that's a single cycle waveform that's provided by the diggy tack. Nasty sounding, right? But let's just take that filter down. Again, do that resonance trick. I'm gonna add a little attack to act kind of like a pseudo sidechain to the kick. So they're competing if we keep the attack full, but if we just add some attack, now the bass rings out under and rises as the kick hits. Just a little trick you can do if you're looking for some side chain but don't want to set the side chain on the master. This is something you can do. Since we drop the pitch, we're going to drop the pitch here so we can keep playing as if we're in C major, but we're going to be in A major. Now, when I start to use the mini log for lead, we will have to use A major. For ease of use right now, I want to stick to the C. The nice thing about the diggy tack, we can change the amount of decay and release per step. So I'm gonna find that first one. This one right here. Let's just add a little bit of decay and release. There it is. And then we just need to go to this one as well. We'll add a little bit of decay and release. Let's just add some symbols. I'm also gonna vary the hi-hats a little bit. I like what the hi-hats are doing, but there's not a lot of change up, right? So let's do something. Let's do a roll right there. All right, so I really like what we've got. I think we've got a really cool foundation. I just want to get kind of like lead sound. So first I'm gonna just mess around in A major. Don't worry, I didn't forget. Let's um let's actually get a new sound. So And this is one I tweaked quite a bit. So let's see. Okay, so one other thing I'm gonna do, and this was something I learned, uh, I think in a live stream, some viewers mentioned, we can temporarily save the pattern so we can make crazy changes to it, right? Like, let's take this and let's go nuts with the, uh, with the tune, right? This is gonna just be chaos. So yeah, works in two ways. If you do that, it's back to where it was, just deleted everything. Another thing that's really cool is in a performance aspect, if you're making changes, you can hit that and it will go back to what it originally was. Awesome way if you're doing mutes or something like that to just quickly reset, go back to where you were at originally. Really cool feature that uh, has a lot of different functions, but for right now, it's if we make changes we hate, we can just go right back to where we want it to be at the start. Okay, so we've got everything saved. Let's see if we can just add some kind of mini log lead. Oh, I like that. All right, let's see if we can do that in MIDI. So let's go to the first MIDI track. And to get MIDI to work, I have a full tutorial up here. Let's just quickly go through it. So we're gonna hold function and click A. And I have the MIDI log set to MIDI channel five because I have a whole MIDI through that's sending MIDI from the diggy tack to everything. And MIDI five is empty on the SP because it's still gonna trigger MIDI five on the SP. There might be a workaround for that. I don't know it at the moment. Uh, if you do, let me know in the comments, but this will work. So let's go to the key. Ah, uh, we can mess with the triggers, even conditional triggers, even on um, these. So let's have that play, let's say 25% of, no, you know what, let's do 50% of the time. Give a little variety, perfect. Couple things I wanna do, we're almost done. This sounds really good. So a couple things that I wanna do is just add a couple of fills and then we're gonna to need to make a B section and maybe a build or something. Let's just do one thing at a time. 
So I want to go to this clap and on that fourth one, I want to add that. Okay, so we're gonna need a B section. So first and foremost, we're going to copy this pad. So we have a backup and then I'm also going to paste it here. I have a very similar sample in here that I'm going to change. Let's go back to one shot mode and let's find that sample. I have a sample that's very similar. I think it's this one. Let's fix that and it's in C, so we're gonna have to drop it. Yeah, let's let's take that. Okay, I know what we're gonna have to do. We will have to go back into slice mode for it. Uh, or we could do warp, warp mode. Yeah. Let's drop it down, we're three octaves down, so let's see. Okay, now let's clear out everything. and just put it on the one. Yeah, that's perfect. And then in this, we're gonna do the temporary mutes and let's shut off all of the drums except the cowbell. And let's uh, actually change that bass up. In this pattern, we're going to... to use the SP for some effects, but we're gonna hold to it. Now we've got our B section. That's the track, super solid. Really dig where we're at with it, but we've got two loops basically. So now it's a question of how do we wanna flesh it out? So there's a couple things we can do. The first is trigger mutes to build the song up by hand basically on just a single pattern. And then when we go to the B section, switch to the other pattern, build that up, switch back to the other one. That works. Another thing you could do that would be a lot cleaner and more structured is copy the pattern multiple times, right? And do this temporary mute or per pattern mute and have different versions of the song. And in those different patterns, you can also create variations, build things up, do different things with the filter, maybe automate the filter, things like that. What you could do is you could either trigger the patterns by hand or use the pattern mode that chains it and do it that way. The final way to do it, and this is something I want to do more often, but let me know in the comments if you want to see this workflow for it, but is do overbridge. So overbridge goes USB audio into the computer from this and creates a channel or audio track per sample track and a two track of all the audio that you're using. So what you could then do is just sample in all the loops and build it in a DAW. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see my overbridge workflow. That's probably the easiest way and maybe best way subjectively to do this type of thing. We're not gonna do that today. I think what we're gonna do is just jam out a little bit building the patterns. If you wanna see the full jam I do using that method, check out the channel membership. It's the best way to support the channel. For just a dollar, you'll get all the full beats we make in the videos. And if you join for the Solar Sailor tier, you'll get every sample from every video. So best way to support the channel. But of course, just hanging out is always more than enough. So I appreciate you watching. We're gonna jam out to this a little bit. And that's how you use a diggy tack. If you want, a step-by-step -step workflow for creating beats using the Diggy Tact as a MIDI hub, check out this video next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.